you earn more money working in the driver taxi. Than an economist. Yes. drivers are entrepreneurs here because they're running their own business. They make more money in a day than most professions make in a month. And so you'll get into a taxi cab here and the driver is a doctor, an economist, an engineer, and they've gone from making $60 or so a month to making $100 a day. I sacrifice my study, but I earn more money. Same. That's the way that I look at it. You are happier in this job making more money as a taxi driver than yeah. as an yeah. economist. There's no comparison, so brilliant people are leaving their professions to drive taxis here. But how did driving a taxi become one of the most lucrative private businesses in Cuba? Well, that's what we're out to explore. And to get at this reality, we're going to find out about one of the most intriguing car industries on the planet. First, we need to follow the money. Here in Cuba, there are two currencies. There's the peso, or the national currency. And if you work for the government, you're paid in pesos. And then there's the convertible peso. It's called CUC, and it's pegged to the dollar. CUC is the currency that tourists use. And here's the deal. The CUC is worth 25 times more than the peso. And this difference in currency has created essentially two different economies. Lorenzo, our economist taxi driver, he lives in the world of the CUC driving taxis, so for him it wasn't worth it to take a state job with its pesos. But I'm curious how it is for other taxi drivers. Hey, Mas Dinero, you make more money this way. So you make 80 cook in un dia. Okay. And then Guantanamo, a construction. ¿Te gusta la construcción o taxi? No, taxi es mejor, mucho mejor. Vine a La Habana porque en La Habana hay mucho más dinero en Guantánamo. All of my taxi drivers have been men. Then I meet a woman driving one of the oldest cars I'd seen on the road. She'd been a doctor. She says she'll tell me what it's been like to make such a big transition. Bueno, en ese momento no había ningún fotingo en la calle eh, que fuera particular, que fuera de algún dueño con ninguna mujer taxista, entonces eh, la sensación fue doble. Sí, he tenido que tener coraje porque el medio con, con los hombres, que hay mucho también a veces machismo y es complicado. En lo particular, por supuesto que un taxista gana más que un médico. Nellis and so many drivers are building on a legacy that began in the 1990s. Classic cars and their taxi drivers helped rescue Cuba's economy and played a key role in Cuba having private businesses at all. But to understand this properly, we need to go back to the classic car heyday, and Havana was the epicenter for it. In the 1950s, Cuba and the U.S. had quite a love affair. Cuba was the leading importer of North American manufactured cars. The 57 Chevy made its debut here in Havana before those in Detroit even got a glimpse. But the love affair turned bitter when in 1959, the revolution put an end to American imports. Fidel Castro saw it as a symbol of the ills of capitalism, and the U.S. embargo made sure that the breakup stuck. Cuba had tens of thousands of American cars without possibility of importing parts. And up until recently, Cubans couldn't buy a car at all without very complicated permissions. So there's been an incentive to keep those classic cars going. Approximately 60,000 of them still cruise the island. So world-class mechanics were birthed. They've managed to rebuild these cars with uh, Honda parts, Toyota parts, Kia parts, Mercedes-Benz. Whatever automobile parts they can find are keeping these American cars alive. That speaks to the ingenuity and the creativity of not only the mechanics, but frankly, this entire island. I go to speak with a legendary mechanic who helps keep Cuba's top underground drag racers on the move. Que a veces no hay pieza y hay que hay que crearla, hay que inventarla, hay que llevarla al tornero, hay que llevarla maquinado, hay que hacer toda una serie de cosas para poder resolver los problemas, ¿no entiendes? Que eso es un reto bastante grande. En otro país donde donde existe la pieza de respuesta, donde existe todo eso, usted quitó eso, dame acá la otra, Pancho, la montó ya y salió caminando. In two hours. De lo contrario, puede meterse, no sé, dos días, tres días. A new generation of mechanics are coming up. 
Eh, hasta ahora, en nueve años no me he encontrado ninguno que no lo pueda arreglar. ¿no? Here in Cuba, cars are never officially totaled. Hay dos razones, una la, nece una la necesidad y la otra eh, que no tenemos otra opción que este. No podemos hacer otra cosa, ¿no? De la mecánica cubana, me gustaría decir que no hay nada que no podamos adaptar ni poner en un carro. So the mechanics have been keeping all those cars alive. And this brings us back to how those old cars and the taxi drivers helped rescue the Cuban economy and jumpstart private businesses. See, Cuba and the Soviet Union became bedfellows in the 1970s and 80s. But when the Soviet Union collapsed, Cuba's economy was heartbroken. Well, it went into a deep depression. It was named the Special Period, and one of the ways Fidel Castro worked to get the economy up and running again was to invite tourists to come. Private licenses were issued to drive taxis. The classic American cars were painted bright and beautiful, and a generation of entrepreneurs were born in Cuba. They used the asset that they had, and now taking a ride in a classic car is one of the most iconic things you can do in Cuba. This is such a good business, it's hard to even find a classic car on the market. These days, most classic cars are kept in families. So, my director and I decide to see what it's like to buy a regular car in Cuba. This is such a highly regulated sector by the government, the main car dealership is the state. We go to one of the car agencies. The gate is locked, but there's a sign saying they have three cars for sale. All are used in over $50,000 each. So we check out Cuba's black market version of Craigslist. This isn't a hoax. While the site Revelico may not be fully legal here, it is well respected. Okay, so this is a five-year-old Kia with 130,000 kilometers, selling for 55,000 kuk, which is basically 58,000 US. Let's buy a car on Revelico so we can see how it works. We find a guy willing to meet with us about his car. El carro es un carro italiano del año 1999, gasolina. The motor está bien, la mecánica, el rodamiento está bien. How much are you asking for for this car? How much money do you want? Quiero por el carro. Yeah, 35 mil. I think that's very interesting because for me, a Fiat with unknown kilometers and 20 years old. Sí, so for $35,000, to me, is very expensive. Yo sé que este carro en otro país, 500, 400. Entonces, por eso sé, sí. sé que, que no hay comparaciones de un otro país como en este. Yeah. Es difícil. Yeah. Yo me hago la misma pregunta. Yeah, Vivo también. aquí, pero no, no sé mm. la verdad. No sé. Es difícil de explicar. Yeah. Para mí, me imagino que para ustedes comprenderlo es más. In spite of these extraordinary challenges, Cubans keep going. They keep figuring out workarounds and seizing whatever opportunities that come their way, even if they take them on a different road than they planned. I have a lot of dreams, but I'm conscious that my country is a good country, a very beautiful country, but it's a, a poor country, so nobody give it to you. So my dreams, yes, I'm, I'm ready to follow wherever they are. <laughs>